he transforms into the fiend, which is this persona of his where he wears this mask and he jumps in the ring and does these kind of creepy things and attacks wrestlers and all that kind of stuff. Now, many of you all don't care about the wrestling side of it, and I wouldn't imagine that you would, although wrestling is cool and I recommend you check it out. But what we can learn from Bray Wyatt today is that the Bible wants us to understand that we have two options when it comes to the words that we say. I was praying about what to talk about today, and to be honest, there are some people in this room and maybe some people watching and listening online that say, you know what, Pastor Devin, I I struggle with my words. I hurt and sometimes I heal. Or maybe you say, Pastor Devin, I've been hurt. I've been getting into some conversations or some arguments, rather, with some friends or some loved ones, some family members. I've been getting into the midst of it, and what happens is When I open my mouth, if we kind of look at the character on the screen here, he's got his hands over his mouth, and that's kind of the visual I want us to think about. When it comes to speaking words to people, ladies and gentlemen, we have two options. We can hurt people or we can heal people. We can hurt people or we can heal people. And so our focus point for this morning, if you don't remember anything else that we talk about today, I'd like for you to remember our focus point, which is, I must be careful with the words I say because they can impact in a hurtful or healthy way. Somebody say hurtful. Somebody say healthy. Let's talk about hurtful. Let's talk about, let's talk about nutrition for a moment. All right. What are some hurtful foods that we could put into our body? Just anybody. Grease, french fries, McDonald's. Sugar. Too much sugar, yeah? Anybody else? Huh? Vegetables. <laughs> I think that's on the healthy side, actually. <laughs> Fried foods, okay. Let's just keep talking about nutrition. What are some healthy foods that we could put in our bodies? Broccoli. Ice cream, whoa. Okay. Even vegan ice cream has too much sugar, probably, if you eat too much of it. Fruit, okay. Maybe some lean proteins, maybe. A little turkey, a little fish, maybe, you know. Okay, well, some of us were able to easily mention foods that can be hurtful or healthy, but I want you to think for a moment about words. Now, don't say those words, but I want you to think about words that are hurtful. Has someone used hurtful words to you this week when they spoke to you? Have you spoken hurtful words to someone else, perhaps, this week? Maybe it's um, your spouse, your kids. Maybe it's a sibling and you, you don't talk that much. Maybe it's your children's mother or your children's father. You all can't communicate because when you go to have a conversation, it's always hurt, hurt hurt. Maybe you use hurtful words this week. God is speaking to you right now about something that you said that you wish you could take back. But how many of you all know that once we say something, we can't take it back? Right? You know when you're working on a Microsoft Word document or a Google Doc or you're typing anywhere, social media even, you're using your thumbs and you're typing on your smartphone or your tablet, you can start typing a message and then delete, right? Have you ever been preparing a text message and before you hit send, you said, nah. (laughs) Y'all ever been there? I've been there. Okay, a few of us. How about something on social media you were about to post and then you're like, nah. Now some of us like, I'm sending it, shoot, I'm gonna send it. This is how it is. You don't like it? Unfollow me, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Some of us in here are like that. Some of us watching online. Y'all commenting on YouTube right now. You're, giving, you're trolling us. It's okay. We can use our words to hurt or to what, church? Heal. Heal. Let's talk about healing words, healthy words. What are some healthy words that you said to someone this week? You can just shout it out. Something that helped heal somebody. 
I love you. So proud of you. You're beautiful. <laughs> Keep up the good work. I'll take two more. I'll take that one. One more. I'm proud of you. Those are healthy words. Those are called words of affirmation. They are affirming and they help to build up a person's self-esteem. Well, if healthy words can build a person up, that means hurtful words do what? You got it. So today we're going to look at the Bible to see what God's word has to say about hurtful and healthy words. We're going to get a few definitions on the screen. When the Bible talks about unwholesome words, let's get a definition of unwholesome words on the screen. If you're taking notes, you can go ahead and jot this down. If you've got your smartphone, take it out, zoom in, and snap a quick shot. When we talk about hurtful words, they're really unwholesome is what the Bible calls them. Somebody say unwholesome. Unwholesome words are filthy language that when spoken negatively affect those involved. Okay? Filthy, rotten language that when spoken negatively affect those involved. Now some of you are probably thinking off the bucks, Pastor Devin, I know where you're going with this. You about to stop talking about cuss words. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to say this parenthetically. Put this in the parentheses of our discussion today. There are certain words in the English language that have been deemed profane by the FCC, which is an organization that determines if an album or a song should say explicit content or if a movie should be rated PG, PG-13 or rated R. But their ratings are not God's ratings. Let's just start there. The FCC is not the G-O-D, okay? Now, this federal organization listens out for certain words that are in the English language that if those words are said, up, oh, explicit content. Up, oh, rated R, NC-17. You know, they have all these grades, TV, mature, viewer discretion advised. So, the, the, you know, when that guy's voice comes on, it's like, oh. So, this is gonna have some language in it that may not be appropriate for certain age ranges. But if we think about it, the Bible doesn't tell us that you can grow numerically in order to be able to take in a certain level of unwholesome words. Unwholesome words are just flat out unwholesome words. Whether you're in kindergarten, ninth grade, college, adult, senior citizen, doesn't matter. Unwholesome words are unwholesome words. So what I'm telling you is some of those buzzwords that are considered profane words by the FCC are not necessarily bothersome to God. I know, right? I'll give you an example. Stay with you, Pastor, okay? Stay with me. The F word. Four-letter word. Don't say it. That word is considered to be a curse word in, a, in the English language. Some of you may or may not know that I'm also a musician. I do music. I met a guy that said, hey, man, I F with your music. That was an affirmation. Do you, do you, do you understand? That was a compliment. He wasn't disrespecting me. That was the words that he chose to say he likes my music. You understand what I'm saying? I'm losing half of you. Okay, stay with me. I know you've been taught in westernized society that these words are naughty, but I want you to understand that it's not about the words you say, it's the intent of your heart. Stay with me. Stay with me. There is a term that men use when speaking to girls. They call them thoughts. It's an acronym that stands for that hoe over there. Stay with me. Stay with me. That word is not going to flag the FCC, but it's offensive to God if you're calling one of his creations a whore. Y'all ain't. Are you, are you following me this morning? I'm trying to help you to understand that it's not as black and white as you might think it is. It's about the intent of your heart. Jesus said in the Bible, if you say that you hate your brother, you'll be guilty of the Sanhedrin. But if you say raka, R-A-C-A, you'll be guilty of the flames. 
Raka, R-A-C-A, in Jesus' time was a word that meant empty-headed. It meant to call somebody stupid and idiot. It was an insult to a person's intelligence. If you're using your words to tear someone down, then that is unwholesome. But you can use words to build people up. And it may not be socially accepted, but if you and the people involved embrace it, then it's not bad. I'll give you one more. Please stay with me. Don't get up and walk out. Not yet, anyway. I know women who greet each other using the B word. I come over here. So I know women that say, what up, B? Hey, B. Ah, that's my B. It's a term of endearment, kind of like how black people use the N word. What up, my N? What up, my N? That's my N. But let a white person say that. N? The intent of the, the intent of the what? What are you meaning behind those words? I said that was one more, but th this is my last one for real. Let me get back to the scripture. Watch this. Watch the phrase. You ready? You ready? You are just like your father. Or, you just like your father. Same words, different intent of the, y'all got it. You got it? Do we understand the definition of unwholesome words this morning? It's not the cookie cutter words, it's about what's behind your, y'all got it. The Bible doesn't mention curse words. When the Bible mentions to curse, it means to damn, to put someone down. It's unwholesome words. So the profane words that we've been taught are naughty words are not necessarily offensive to God. This is what's offensive to God when you use that language to tear someone down. And the Bible gives us four explicit versions of unwholesome talk. And none of them are profane words that we would identify with in society. The first one, let's get the definition on the screen, quarreling. Somebody say quarreling. And that word is kind of hard to say, quarreling, quarrel. Quarreling is when there's an angry dispute that occurs resulting in a temporary or permanent break in friendly relations. Um, in the DMV, we call this instigating, right? Uh, I remember people starting fights at the playground. Like, you know, he said this about your mother. I wouldn't take that, bro. I'm, I'm just saying, man, number, space, and opportunity. What's up? You know, quarreling is people that use their words to start stuff. Y'all know anybody like that? Just got to say something. Oh! Every time you come over here to the cookout, oh, man. You better not come over here. You better not come over. Like, because that person likes to start trouble. These people will use their words, and if they're charismatic, they'll use comedy to kind of make it seem like it's a joke, but it really ain't a joke. Don't you hate when people do that? They hide their hate in humor. You hating on me. No, I was just playing. Well, I ain't. Let's go. N word. You know, so... Quarreling is when there's an angry dispute that occurs, resulting in a temporary or permanent. I might say permanent. The old saying goes, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never. That's a lie. Words are some of the most destructive things. Words start wars. Words start dudes getting the hammer and squeezing and pointing. Words start stuff. God spoke the world into existence. Your words are powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Do not underestimate the power of what you say out of your mouth or what you tweet from your phone. Your text messages have power. Our focus point for this morning, if you don't remember anything else we talk about today, God wants you to remember that you must be careful with the words you what, church? Because they can impact in a hurtful or healthy what? Amen. We talked about quarreling, starting stuff. The next definition of unwholesome talk that the Bible is explicit about is coarse joking. In D.C., in the DMV, we call that joning. If you're watching in another state, you probably call it something else. Playing the dozens, dissing. I don't know what people call them in other states. But over here, we call it joning. 
Joning is basically this. Coarse joking is when joking gets crude and vulgar, often done while making fun of somebody. You don't have to answer this, but have you ever been involved in coarse joking? Have you ever been a victim of coarse joking? The Bible says the instigator uses their humor to be hurtful by getting people to quarrel or getting people to argue and dispute. But the coarse joker or the joner directly bypasses using someone else and uses those words directly at your heart talking about your clothes, talking about your skin, talking about your hair, talking about your house, how you live, talking about your family members, using words with humor to get laughs about you. Bullying. I just saw, uh, well, there's a video that went viral on social media. Uh, There was a white student at a high school who was being bullied and teased because he was low income and he didn't have much money, he wore the same clothes every day, pretty much. Two African-American football players gave him fresh shoes from their closet, fresh clothes. The video went viral, and all three boys, the two African-American kids and the white kid, went on Ellen, and Ellen surprised them with Will Smith coming out to greet them. And my wife and I were just talking about it this morning, that we hope that this sends a message to students that there are benefits with being kind with your words, being helpful and healthy with the way you treat someone. Not hurtful, but being helpful to help someone be healthy. So coarse joking is using humor to hurt someone. And then we move on to our next one, which is, you know, flat out lying. This one probably doesn't need a description, but let's look at it anyway. Lying is deliberately making a false statement made with the intent to deceive. An intentional untruth. Have you ever told a lie? If you said no, you just did. Everybody has lied, right? We all lie. Well, the Bible says that when we lie, that is destructive and hurtful, and it's not helping because it causes people to not be able to trust. The fourth and final one that the Bible talks about is gossiping. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And we Christians love to hide gossip in, we're going to pray for them. Let me tell you about this person so we can, we can pray after. <laughs> See, that's, that's what you call being uh, slick with your Christianity. Your intention is not really to pray for them. You want to give the juice or you want to, you know, the tea for the day. Gossiping is participating in idle talk or rumors. It ain't even got to be true. Girl, let me tell you what I heard, man. Hey, look, man, I'm just telling you, man. I'm, I, I'm telling you what he told me. Third person, fourth person, person information. It's participating in talk or rumors, especially about the personal or private affairs of others. If someone has confided in you with something and then their business is in the street, has that ever happened to you before? You know you only told a few people. Right? And then the information is out there, and then you go back to them people. Which one of y'all said something? Wasn't me. (laughs) Well, we've defined the four. Now let's dig into the scriptures. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 27. An ungodly man digs up evil, and it is on his lips like a burning fire. Some of us have burned relationships with our words. We have singed opportunities for reconciliation. I know. The old saying goes, burning the bridge. You ever heard that term? Don't burn the bridge here. Why is that important when people say that? Because basically they're telling you, that you're going to need to cross this way again. Don't mess up the opportunity to get to that point again. When you leave a job, you should leave on a good note. (laughs) Because you never know if you might have to come back. (laughs) 
You burn a bridge with your former employer, there's no coming back. And don't ask him for a reference. The Bible says an ungodly man digs up evil. So that means that what you do is you take your shovel, my brothers and my sisters, with your unwholesome words, and you dig up dirt. You dig up dirt. The, you, you all ever seen those cartoons where like the cartoon character takes a shovel and they dig and they dig and they start moving real fast and then they're in the pit. They've thrown the dirt out but now they're down in the hole. That's kind of what happens to us when we use unwholesome words. Do you know that if you gossip about somebody, you're saying a lot more about yourself than the person you're talking about? You're telling on yourself. You're communicating to the person who, who, who you're speaking to that you're not trustworthy and for them to never, ever, ever share anything intimate or personal with you. Why do you think people be so surface around you? Because they can't trust you with their business. You have a reputation of being a gossip. You have a reputation of being someone who digs up dirt and uses it whenever it's convenient for you. Some people make careers off being gossips. You know this? There's Wendy Williams, of course. God bless her. Now she's going through a divorce, I think, or something like that. But it's like, <laughs> Wendy Williams will make fun of a celebrity on her show. Then next month, they'll be on her show. She is a rarity. <laughs> Most people stay far from a gossip, but she is a celebrity gossip, and the celebrities want her show her show's uh, pull for their new movie or project they're working on, so they submit to her foolishness for a moment. But it's not going to be long term. I feel sorry for Wendy Williams because she's built her career on tearing people down with her words. There's this other guy, I won't say his name, but he's a, he's a professional gossip. I met him at an event. Some other like musicians and celebrities were there and he was trying to hang out or something. I was like, nah, no thanks. I'll be on your show next week. And Pastor Devin Turner of Revolution Church <laughs> shared with me confidentially at the restaurant that he is dealing with such and such. Why would I want to be friends with you, man? I unfollowed him on social media and everything. There's nothing for us to discuss. Because anything I share with you can be on your blog next week. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4. Kind words heal and what? Help. Cutting words, wound, and what? Maim. When we think about the power of words, that word maim is often used with a lion attacking someone. In the Bible, the Bible says that in the story of um, Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, well, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. You know, some dudes ratted on him or whatever. We talked about that a few, uh, few weeks ago, um, that Daniel wouldn't worship the king's statue or what have you. Uh, Daniel wasn't succumbing to what the king wanted, neither were his three friends. Daniel was thrown into a lion's den, but the next day he was protected all night, so the king saw him unharmed. They brought him out of the lion's den. But the people who ratted on Daniel, the Bible says that when they threw those people into the pit, the lions, I'm sorry, yeah, the lions ripped them to pieces before they, their bodies hit the floor. Now that's, that's some maiming right there. That's some Ginsu work. Their talons slashed them dudes up before their bodies hit the floor. By the time their bodies hit the floor, they were in pieces. You have the ability to do that with your words. There's a young girl who went to the Seed Public Charter School who committed suicide a few years ago named Stomaya. And her pastor, one of her mentors who led her to Christ, came to me and said, Devin, I'd like to do a song in her memory. Mm, I hope I don't cry. The song's called There's a Blessing in the Storm. It's the most touching song I've ever been a part of. I brought them into my recording studio all the children from the neighborhood came in. We put the microphones up. And the kids sing, we're going to miss you. But God's going to bring us through. Because there's a blessing in the storm. Because her name is, was Stormaya, but they called her Storm. And we had this sound effect of storms and rain and 
then we put an audio clip on the end of it of her sharing her faith in Jesus Christ with her mentor. And so Maya was being bullied at the Seed Public Charter School. And if you know anything about that school, it's where kids stay overnight and after the kids went to sleep, the staff found her body the next morning. Have you ever maimed someone with your words? I've shared this with you all before that I was a suicidal 12 year old. I was going through a lot of drama in my life, but one of my dramas was that I had a bully at school. And so when people use words to tear people down, you are ripping people apart. And you think it's all fun because you're joning or you're coarse joking or you're gossiping or you just, you know, getting in the tea for the day. You just quarreling. You just wanted to see a fight, man. You wasn't really trying to see nobody die. But the thing is, you can't control what happens when you unleash unwholesome words into the atmosphere. I wish our president understood that. His Twitter account is full of documentation of words that are hurting people. He's done some things that helped too. But if we would have tipped the scales, there's been a lot of hurt coming from the White House lately. And what I'm telling you all is, we need to understand this scripture that kind words heal and help. If you really want to help somebody, don't speak condescending to them. You ain't this. You ain't that. You ain't never doing this. That ain't helping nobody. We need to understand how people receive information because everybody processes information differently. And if we take the time to understand a person, seek first to understand, then to be understood, we'll find out what makes them tick and maybe we can help them. Hmm. Our next scripture. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. <clears throat> In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, the Bible warns us. It's going to come on the screen in a moment. I'll read it to you. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Let's think about that for a moment. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. No gossiping, no lying, no coarse joking, right? No quarreling. The Bible didn't put every curse word that's ever been used in the Bible. Why? Because we make up new, inappropriate words all the, all the time. Thought. Can you imagine the, the prophets of the Old Testament? Oh, God, what is thought? T-H-O-T. Don't use that in the 21st century. Got it. So we're not going to go through the litany of semantics because it's not about the phonetical pronunciation of words. It's not about phonics. It's about heart intent. Watch this. I'm going to make up a word right before your eyes. Are you ready? Watch. Watch this. Hork. H-O-R-K. Hork. Hi, Horks. <laughs> Who you call it a whore? What does it mean? Right? Man, I'm feeling hork today. Man, I'm about to get some hork. <laughs> what does it mean? Whatever I want it to mean. Why? I just made it up. Right? I just made it up. But if the intent of my heart is unwholesome, I will use that word to tear you down. I'm about to hork you up, cuz. I can't even say it with a straight face. What the hork y'all doing in here? You hork busters? All right. <laughs> Come on, help me stay focused here. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. <laughs> Do not let, somebody say let. let. That means you can control it. Oh. 
Can we get the picture of Bray Wyatt back on the screen, please? My buddy Bray. Hopefully he's on Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. I know, right? That's why she likes wrestling. If y'all don't watch wrestling, just... Anyway, <clears throat> Bray, my man Bray, do I hurt or do I heal? <gasps> I have the power. Now, since y'all, most of y'all don't watch wrestling, I'm going to tell you what happened. When he debuted as the Fiend, that persona that hurts, he got in the ring. It was really cool. The lights were doing all this cool stuff, and he fought Finn Balor. It was great. Um, but when he went ready to do a special move, he put the gloves out, and the, and the whole crowd was saying, hurt, 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 hurt. He was like, ah, he didn't know what to do. Then he decided to hurt him and did the finisher, pinned him. It was over. <clears throat> but what my point is, Bray listened to the crowd and chose to hurt. Who or what are you listening to when you make decisions on what you say? Some of us, we say hurtful things because they said hurtful things first, Pastor. We turned into kindergartners. Well, she started it. <laughs> right? She said it first. I was first in line. I'm the line leader. Like, we get really kiddish, real quickish. And what we have to understand is what Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says. Let's get it back on the screen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, you have the power to control which one comes out your mouth. Somebody say, let. That means that if you're saved, if you've confessed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you have the power of God in you that can make you go, mm, you mother... Like, the Holy Spirit of God can give you restraint. But you can also do what the Bible says, quench the Holy Spirit, which means, Shh, God, God, I got this. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind now. I'm going to put my religion back on later, but right now, God's turned down and I'm turned all the way up. And so what happens is we find ourselves turning up on people, going off on people, explosive behavior on people. And then we want to say, you want to come to church on Sunday? <laughs> and they're like, yo, if that's what they teach y'all over there, heck no. Let's wrap up with Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 says, do not what, church? Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up. Hmm. I want you to think like a construction worker. We're in D.C., and if you don't live in D.C., wherever you live, you see construction going on in Prince George's County, Maryland, in Virginia, wherever you live, watching and listening online, anywhere in your state, I bet you could drive or catch the bus or some form of means of transportation and see construction going on somewhere. Imagine a construction crew spending several months laying the foundation for a structure that they're building, and then after a month, they start tearing it down. And then two weeks later, they start building it up again. Then a week later, they take the sledgehammers and start tearing down the cement walls they just put up. You would probably ask the question, why are they doing this thing over and over again where they're undoing what they did, they're building up and then they're breaking down, and they're building it up and they're breaking it down, and this is how some of our marriages look. Build it up, break it down. Build it up. Break it down. Our relationships with our kids, build it up, break it down. We say little encouragement to our children, then we tear them down. We pick them up, and we break them down. And as nonsense-ish as it is for a construction crew to do that, why do we do it in our relationships every day? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, only what is helpful for building others, what church? Up. Up. According to how you want them to be. Mm -hmm. See, some of us have goals for our children and, and then they're not our children's goals. We, our kids have desires and ambitions and we want them to do something a certain way, so 
we're going to make you do this. I play football. You're going to play football. <laughs> I don't want to get hit. Stop crying. He don't want to play football. But he has something else that interests him. Right? Y'all got real quiet. Okay. So, I'm going to talk to YouTube. So, YouTube, what I'm saying is this, right? Sometimes we want to build people up according to who we want them to be. Ooh. Construction crews have to follow the blueprint for the building. A construction crew should not deviate from the blueprint of the architect. We're going somewhere, church. God is the architect, and he has designed your children. He's designed your spouse. He's designed people in your life to be built up a certain way. You have to use your words to help encourage them to follow the blueprint of Scripture given by the architect, not from a rebellious construction worker standpoint, but from the divine God who designed them the purpose and plans for their lives. Somebody say, build up according to their need. Well, pastor, how do I find out their need? Good question. You have to build relationship with people. Right? You have to spend what? Oh, well, that's too much, pastor. I'm just going to keep cussing people out. I'm just going to keep going lying. Man, forget what you... Psh. then all the relationships in your life look like a construction crew that's building up brick by brick by brick. Two weeks later, sledgehammer it down. You're going nowhere, but you're exerting a lot of energy in that relationship. Building others up according to their need that it may benefit those who listen. Hmm. You may say, Pastor Devin, how do I apply this message to my life? How do I take this one step further in my spiritual journey? Here's our next step. This is our application. This is our homework for the week. Some of y'all say, homework? Thank you. Here's your homework. Here's our homework. I'm working on this too. Please, please, please don't think that just because I'm up here talking about this that I got this down packed. Trust me, I do not. But what I'm saying is that God wants us to understand that before I speak, I need to ask myself, is the outcome of this conversation going to helpfully build up and benefit myself, the people I'm talking about, and the people I'm talking to? Let's look at that again. Before you talk this week, some of you are like, Pastor, I can't do this. I cannot do this. I speak what's on my mind, right? No, you're really speaking what's on your heart. I'm trying to help you get a filter on that thing. Growing up in my mom and dad's house, we had a Brita water filter on the, on the tap in the kitchen sink. And it was supposed to kind of help filter the negativity, the bad stuff so that only the good stuff will come out. This is your Brita water filter for your mouth. You hear me? Before I speak, I need to ask myself, is the outcome of this conversation going to helpfully build up and benefit myself, the people I'm talking about, and the people I'm talking to? If not, I don't need to say it. Some of y'all are going to be just walking around. Mm -mm, mm, mm. <laughs> People are going to be like, what's wrong with her? Like, what? <sighs> I'm not saying it's easy. And I know I made light of it with a joke, but I'm saying it will benefit you because my mom taught me if you don't have something nice to say, I don't know, okay. <laughs> this is your three-step filtration system. Is it going to helpfully build up myself? 
right? Because some of us do negative self-talk. We ain't got to amen it, I know. We look in the mirror or we think about ourselves, we only talk about negativity. I ain't this, I ain't that. Stop doing that. The people I'm talking about and the people I'm talking to, if not, just keep it, to, keep it between me and God. Some stuff I just need to talk to God about because the people I'm talking to can't help me with it no way. Think about it like this. The people that you gossip with, do you ever get any next steps from them? Y'all ain't going to say that because you don't want to admit you gossip. Okay, don't say nothing. But the people that entertain your gossip, they're not life coaches. They're not pro professional counselors or therapists. They're gossipers. They're not going to help you with the next step to help the person. It's just talking about them all day. It's not benefiting anybody. So maybe you should take it to God. Or take it to your pastor, take it to a minister, take it to someone that can maybe help you process this. Hey, I'm having this trouble in my marriage. Um, Gene and Sherelle, I've I seen y'all marriage, y'all been married for a while. Um, I could use some help with what's going on in my marriage. That's different. You're seeking wise counsel. Seek wise counsel. Don't seek gossip and friends. The Bible says to seek wise counsel. You don't want to go to a pastor or a therapist or a psychotherapist? Talk to a Christian brother or sister that you know and say, hey, I want to share this with you in confidence. Can I trust you with my information? I need help. I need prayer. That's different. Y'all with me? Let's stand to our feet and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we come before you right now, and we say, God, we struggle in this area.